Good afternoon. D d during today's legislative hearing, we will consider three bills, S-195, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Land Claim Settlement Act of 2023, S-382, the Puyallup uh, Tribe of Indians Land into Trust Confirmation Act of 2023, and S-1322, Unlocking Native Lands and Opportunities for Commerce and Key Economic Developments Act of 2023, S-195, introduced by Senators Peters and Stabenow, would acknowledge the uncompensated taking by the federal government of, the Ke of Keweenaw Bay Indian community lands, provide compensation for the taking of those lands and extinguish all Keweenaw Bay Indian community claims to those lands. S382, introduced by Senators Cantwell and Murray, would transfer these the three parcels of land totaling approximately 17.3 acres and currently owned in fee simple by the Puyallup uh, tribe into trust for the benefit of the tribe. And lastly, Senator Murkowski and I introduced S 1322, the Unlocked Act, which would amend the Long-Term Leasing Act to authorize all federally recognized tribes to lease, to issue leases of up to 99 years and expand the Tribal Hearth Act authority to rights of way. Before I turn to Vice Chair Murkowski for an opening statement, I'd like to extend my welcome and thanks to our witnesses for joining us today. And I look forward to your uh, testimony and discussion. I'll recognize uh, the vice chair and then the former chair, uh, Senator Cantwell. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you for the hearing on, on three important bills. You have outlined uh, all three of them, S-195, S-382, and S-1322. Um, I will limit my comments to the bill that you and I have introduced, the Unlocked Act. The Unlocked Act amends the Long-Term Leasing Act of 1955 to authorize leases of up to 99 years. And in today's economy, the 50-year maximum lease term really doesn't work to obtain necessary financing to build out big infrastructure projects. It also makes little sense for Congress to consider separate standalone legislation for every tribe for this purpose. We've actually done that now some 60 times already. It's time consuming and quite honestly it's a waste of tribal resources. Lease terms, however, are not the only barrier to economic development. Tribes have also seen projects get bogged down in red tape at BIA over rights-of-way approvals which are commonly needed to utilize natural resources for these projects. So our bill would address this barrier too by authorizing a self-determination process similar to the model used in the Hearth Act for tribal leasing regulations. So I think this is a good bill. Proud to be able to, to sp sponsor it with you, Mr. Chairman, and look forward to seeing it enacted so that tribes can take full advantage of the opportunities that we've included in the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act as well as the Inflation Reduction Act. So glad to have the witnesses before the committee as well. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll now recognize Senator Cantwell to uh, introduce uh, one of the panelists. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you and Vice Chair Murkowski for holding this important hearing. I want to thank the witnesses for being here today, and I do want to introduce Puyallup Tribal Council Member Annette Bryant, who will be testifying in, on the legislation before us today. I'd also like to thank Council Member from the Puyallup Tribe, Council Member Wrightout, for being here as well. Council Member Bryan has served the Puyallup Tribe throughout her career. She was first elected to the, Pri the Puyallup Tribal Council in 2016, and prior to that, Council Member Bryan worked on behalf of the tribes at the Environmental Protection Agency, for a decade served as Executive Director of the Puyallup National Housing Authority and has appeared before this committee. Council Member Bryan is an important leader for the Puyallup Tribe and for uh, the region. I can't thank her enough for participating in today's hearing about an important economic opportunity for the Puyallup Tribe in our region. I introduce S-382, the Puyallup Tribe of Indian Lands into Trust Confirmation Act, which would take over 17 acres of land currently owned by the Puyallup Tribe into trust. As Council Member Bryan will talk about, this is a necessary step in restoring parts of the tribe's ancestral homeland along Commencement Bay in Washington. And importantly, S-382 will allow the tribe to pursue economic development and job creation opportunities for the tribe and the surrounding community in Pierce County. I'm proud to have worked with the Puyallup tribe, Senators Murray, Representative Kilmer, Representative Strickland, and others in the introduction of this bill. I look forward to working with the committee here and our colleagues and to getting this legislation passed. So thank you again, Mr. Chairman, for 
having S382 before us today and for council members' testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator. And, oh, I, I just should say, if I'm not here in person, I will be asking Secretary Newland for a position on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Cantwell. We're pleased to have uh, a guest of the committee, but a friend of all of ours, uh, Gary Peters, uh, Senator Gary Peters from Michigan, to introduce his guest. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and uh, Vice Chair Murkowski, for holding uh, this hearing and for considering yes, uh, 195, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Land Cave. Land Claim Settlement Act of 2023. And I'm happy to be here today to uh, introduce a fellow Michigander, the President Doreen uh, Blaker of the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community. Uh, President Blaker has served on the Tribal Council for over 14 years and has been a strong proponent of preserving the tribe's culture, lands, uh, and natural resources. She's uh, joined at today's hearing by two of her uh, council uh, members, uh, Tribal Assistant Secretary Artie Curtis uh, behind uh, her and Councilman Rodney uh, Loonsfoot. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Welcome uh, to, the, to the committee. Uh, it's uh, certainly been a real honor to, uh, to work with the Keweenaw Bay Indians community on this uh, effort to settle uh, these claims. The tribe has worked diligently and in good faith with me and with uh, the rest of the uh, Michigan congressional delegation, as well as the state of Michigan, uh, their local neighbors uh, and others to, to find a resolution uh, to this issue. The result of my bill, S-195, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Land Claim Settlement Act, uh, this bipartisan, bicameral, and long overdue legislation will address these long-standing claims of the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community while clearing title of current landowners uh, in the community. The legislation would right a historical wrong by authorizing federal funds through the U.S. Department of Interior that could be used by KBIC for governmental services, economic development, natural resources product, pro, production, and land acquisition. Senator Stabenow serves as an original co-sponsor of the bill uh, here in the Senate, and Congressman Jack Bergman has introduced identical legislation in the House. I also want to take an opportunity to briefly recognize and, and thank uh, my friend and a fellow Michigander as well, uh, Assistant Secretary Brian Bullen. Uh, I uh, introduced Brian before this committee at his uh, nomination uh, uh, hearing, and he has admirably served our nation's tribal communities uh, in the time since. Uh, I have worked with KBIC and Assistant Secretary Newland uh, and his team over many years uh, in developing, or over the years, to develop this legislation. Certainly, thank you uh, for all of your uh, help, Assistant Secretary Newland. It's good to, good to see you again. I appreciate the committee's time and uh, attention to this uh, very important bill. So thank you again uh, for have, holding this hearing. Thank you very much. Uh, in addition to the two uh, distinguished panelists, we also have a uh, Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs uh, for the Department of Interior, uh, the Honorable Brian Newland. Uh, are there any other members wishing to make an opening statement? Hearing none, I want to remind our witnesses that your full written testimony will be made part of the hearing record and please confine your remarks to five minutes or less. Uh, Assistant Secretary Newland, please proceed with your testimony. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Madam Vice Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I'm often, uh, take third billing in my own house. So uh, I appreciate the, the chance to do so here before the committee. I serve as the Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs and I appreciate the opportunity to present the department's views on S-195, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Land Claim Settlement Act, S-382, the Puyallup Tribe of Indians Land and the Trust Confirmation Act and the Unlocked Act uh, unlocking Native Lands and Opportunities for Commerce and Key Economic Developments. S-195 would settle the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community's claims to certain lands within the exterior boundaries of the Lawrence Indian Reservation in Michigan. The community was wrongfully dispossessed of lands reserved in the 1842 and 1854 Treaties of La Pointe, and those lands were later conveyed to the state of Michigan. S-195 authorizes the appropriation of $33.9 million to the Secretary of the Interior to transfer to the tribe as compensation for the loss of those lands. The tribe may use the funds for any lawful purpose, but cannot use those funds to acquire lands for gaming. The bill would also extinguish the tribe's claims to those lands and clear the title of current landowners of the tribe's claims, and the department supports this legislation. S-382 directs the transfer of approximately 17 acres of 
uh, fee land to the Puyallup tribe in Pierce County, Washington to be taken into trust uh, for the tribe's benefit. These lands will be part of the tribe's reservation and will not be eligible for class two or class three gaming. And S-382 also stipulates that the federal government is not liable for any environmental contamination that occurred on the lands prior to the date they're taken into trust. Environmental assessments uh, conducted by the tribe identified legacy pollution on those lands. And our fee to trust process at the department would likely require remediation that would be prohibitively expensive for the tribe. That's why the department advised the Puyallup tribe to pursue congressional action to transfer these lands into trust. S-382 would prevent a long and costly remediation process and ensure that the lands are restored to the tribe and we support this bill also. The Unlocked Act would amend the Long-Term Leasing Act, uh, which provides, the Long-Term Leasing Act provides authority for tribes to enter into surface leases for up to 50 years. This maximum term often limits the ability of tribes to engage in long-term planning and economic development. Over the years, as the Vice Chair noted, Congress has amended this act to permit individual tribes to enter into leases for longer than 50 years, and each addition has required separate legislation which is time consuming and resource draining for tribes. The Unlocked Act makes three significant amendments to the Long-Term Leasing Act. It increases the maximum lease term for tribes up to 99 years. It clarifies uh, that the Long-Term Leasing Act authorizes leases for certain purposes and they can include the necessary utilization of natural resources. And it would authorize tribes to approve rights of way without further approval of the Secretary of the Interior if the tribe's rights of way approval process is consistent with the department's leasing regulations or if the tribe has regulations approved by the secretary under that section. The Unlocked Act will build upon the success of the Hearth Act, which restored tribes' ability to control the leasing of their own lands. The department welcomes this congressional action to enhance tribal sovereignty and self-determination, and we support the Unlocked Act and we're ready to provide any technical assistance to the committee that you may request. So Mr. Chairman and Madam Vice Chair, I appreciate the chance to testify today on these bills and look forward to answering any questions you have. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Newland. Ms. Blaker, uh, please proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chair Murkowski, and members of the committee. My name is Doreen Blaker, and I have the honor of serving as the president of the Keweenaw Bay Indian community. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony on S-195, the Keweenaw Bay Indian Community Land Claim Settlement Act. This part bipartisan bill would compensate our tribe for the unlawful taking of our treaty-protected reservation lands and confirmed title for the current landowners. This bill is a testament to how working in the spirit of collaboration can lead to positive results. Today, the Keweenaw Bay Indian community is located on the Lawrence Indian Reservation in Barriga County on the shores of Lake Superior. In the mid 1800s, the Western frontier continued to expand and the federal government took a great interest in the mineral resources of the Upper Peninsula. This led the United States to enter into the 1842 and 1854 Treaties of La Pointe with our ancestors. The 1842 treaty addressed mineral rights and provided for the cession of lands to west and south of Lake Superior. However, the terms of the 1842 treaty specifically reserved our rights to continue to occupy, hunt, fish, and gather in our homelands within the ceded territory. In the 1854 treaty, we ceded additional lands in Michigan and Wisconsin in return for the recognition of a permanent reservation, the Lawrence Indian Reservation. Unfortunately, the promises made to our people in these treaties were not kept. Despite the protections of the 1842 and 1854 treaties, our reservation lands were unlawfully seized and transferred to the state of Michigan through the 1850 Swamp Land Act and the 1852 Canal Land Act. Shortly after signing the 1854 treaty, the state of Michigan began demanding that the federal government transfer title to wetlands within our reservation based on the Swamp Land Act. For many years, the federal, federal government flatly rejected Michigan's contentions and the United States General Land Office refused to transfer title. The Interior Department informed Michigan that its submission of, sw of a swamp lands list did not obligate the U.S. to transfer these lands because they were already reserved for our people. The Supreme Court confirmed this in 1906. 
However, the GLO transferred 2,700 acres of reservation swamp lands to the state of Michigan between 1893 and 1937. These transfers violated both federal law and the creation of our reservation through the 1854 treaty. The community has never been compensated for this unlawful taking. Further, through the Canal Land Act, the community was dispossessed of more than 1,300 acres of the Lawrence Indian Reservation. The Canal Land Act was intended to help finance the construction of the Sault Ste. Marie Canal. The United States had granted Michigan the right to select 750,000 acres of federal land within the state to defray the cost of construction within the canal. The state identified and selected more than 1,300 acres within our reservation. Without explanation, the Secretary of Interior approved Michigan's land selection within the Lons Reservation, even though those lands were already set aside by the 1854 Treaty. Our tribal council sought to advance these claims and the justice our tribe is due through non-adversarial means so that we can maintain harmony with our neighbors. The community presented our claims to the Interior Department showing that the taking of our reservation lands violate, violated the Fifth Amendment to the Constitution. In December of 2021, the Interior Department stated, we have carefully reviewed pertinent documents, including the tribe's expert reports, and have determined that the tribe's claims to the swamp lands and the canal lands have merit. To resolve these long-standing claims, the tribe has been working closely with our neighboring communities, the state of Michigan, the Interior Department, and our congressional delegation. Our efforts resulted in the Keweenaw Bay Land Claims Settlement Act, which ensures our neighbors are not harmed, the community is made whole, and harmony amongst our collective communities is preserved. This bipartisan bill is supported by our neighbors, Barraga County, the Village of Barraga, the Village of Launce, as well as the Governor of Michigan. In closing, the tribe would like to ex express our utmost gratitude to Senator Peters, Senator Stabenow, and Congressman Bergman for introducing the KBIC Settlement Act. Enactment of the KBIC Settlement Act would mean that KBIC is finally compensated for the taking of our lands, our neighbors would gain clear title to their lands, and the state and federal government would right an historical wrong. Miigwech, thanks again for holding this hearing, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Ms. Bryan, please proceed with your testimony. Thank you. Fox Hale, good afternoon. My name is Annette Bryan, and I'm... Oh. Hugs Lahale. Good afternoon. My name is Annette Bryan, and I'm a councilwoman for the Puyallup Tribe of Indians. And I bring you the greetings of Chairman Bill Sterud and Vice Chairwoman Sylvia Miller, who unfortunately were not able to make it today. And also want to acknowledge my fellow councilman James Rideout, who is here with me today. First, I'd like to thank Chairman Schatz and Ranking Member Murkowski for the opportunity to present this testimony. I also want to thank Senator Cantwell for her tireless work on behalf of Indian Country generally and on S382 specifically. Without Senator Cantwell, we would not be here today. The Puyallup Tribe is a signatory to the Treaty of Medicine Creek. Under this treaty, the tribe reserved a 20,000 acre reservation, which was to be a permanent homeland for my tribe. However, the ink had barely dried on the tr treaty when concerted efforts were undertaken to take our tribe's land. Over the next 50 years after the treaty, most of the land within our reservation was taken as a result of spurious acts of Congress, illegal sales of reservation lands, and outright theft. But in 1983, the tribe's title to the bed of the Puyallup River and adjacent exposed lands, including lands within the Port of Tacoma, was confirmed by the federal court. This decision gave rise to a historic settlement agreement between 12 parties, including the tribe, the city of Tacoma, the port of Tacoma, the state of Washington, and the federal government, which was enacted by Congress. The Settlement Act restored the tribe nearly 1,000 acres of land, including lands within the port of Tacoma. Today, while the Puyallup Reservation consists of approximately 28 square miles, we have 1,252 acres of land held in trust by the United States for the tribe or our members which is less than 8% of the entire reservation. And we are one of the tribes, we are one of the most urban reservations in the country. Our efforts to restore our homeland to trust is complicated by the fact that the city of Tacoma is in the location of multiple kinds of industrial activities. Thus, most of the tribe's territory is contaminated by legacy pollution, which means that while the land is now cleaned up to federal and state standards, 
some measure of the contaminants can still be detected. When our land was taken from us, it was clean. And it breaks our elders' hearts that the land has any contamination on it at all when our ancestors fought so hard to protect and preserve these lands for future generations. S-382 will restore the tribe's place along Commencement Bay and will expand the tribe's presence along the Blair Waterway. We have the support of the City of Tacoma, Pierce County, the Port of Tacoma, and the State of Washington. Our plans for these lands are exciting. The property along the Blair Waterway is critical to fulfilling the promise of the Puyallup Land Settlement, which is over 30 years old now, which recognized the tribe's right to engage in foreign trade. This land is adjacent to our existing Settlement Act trust land that is designated a foreign trade zone. By adding this land to the port, the tribe is well positioned to develop a 21st century shipping terminal and become the first international tribal trade center in modern times. The property along Commencement Bay will be the first Puyallup tribal trust land along these sacred waters in more than 100 years. On this property, we are planning a first of its kind indigenous internationally inspired restaurant, which will introduce the food of my people to the people from around the world. And we're uh, partnering with celebrated chef Roy Yamaguchi on this venture. We are so excited, and I'm sure you know where Roy's is, <laughs> Chairman, <laughs> we are so excited about these opportunities, but it is the restoration of these lands to tribal trust status that means the most to us. We lost so much of our land, and it's the Tribal Council's goal to restore as much of this land as possible in our lifetime. By doing this, we are fulfilling the hopes of our ancestors when they signed the treaty and reserved these lands for our permanent homelands. Before I finish, I want to add my voice in support of S-1322, the Unlocked Act. Puyallup Tribe is one of 59 tribes that sought the right to extend leasing authorities, and we saw this as critical to our e efforts to further economic development. I thank the chairman for your leadership on this issue. I'd also like to thank Senators Hogan and Smith for sponsoring S-1308 to the committee, so the committee, which I'm an um, alternate on, can finish our important work on the Progress Act. And finally, I want to thank you for the chance to testify, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Um, Roy Yamaguchi makes delicious food. Uh, Assistant Secretary Newland, you testified that the department supports S-1322 and uh, that these are important fixes. Um, would increasing the $2 million cap on the department's land acquisition fund further assist tribes to unlock their economic potential? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, it would. Uh, that is uh, one of the reasons that the president sought an additional or an increase in that cap to $12 million in the uh, FY24 budget request. But anything that helps to expand tribal land base, uh, we believe would help promote tribal economic development. Uh, Secretary Newland, as a former tribal leader, you have a unique perspective on how 1322 would work in real life. Can you give me an example of how important expanded leasing and right-of-way authority is to Indian country? Well, uh, I know you, uh, you appreciate brevity, so I'll try to leave it to one example, uh, Mr. Chairman. But uh, I, I think back to a time when we were working on a housing development uh, in our community when I was tribal president. Um, and we had to get multiple rights of way for different utilities and a roadway uh, to move that development forward. And it, and it was an agonizing process. And had we had the opportunity uh, to have tribal control over that process, uh, we could have achieved that approval much more quickly. Thank you. Um, President uh, Blaker, you testified that S-195 will right a historic wrong for your tribe and address the uncompensated taking of your land. Can you share how important this bill is to clarify the cloud on the title for current landowners? Well, Chairman Schatz, uh, we've done our best to work with the local units of government so that we, um, that property owners wouldn't have to worry about that. That, they're, that working government to government will take care of this problem. So I think that once the bill when the bill gets passed, that the cloud will be lifted. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, this is a question to you, to you uh, 
Assistant Secretary Newland, and it regards uh, S382. Um, it's my understanding um, from what we just heard from uh, Councilwoman Bryan that the lands that would be taken into trust under the bill have met state and federal environment cleanup standards. Is that your understanding? Based on the tribe's report to us, yes, that's our understanding. So, um, as, as you probably know, we are dealing with extensive um, contaminated lands issues in the state of Alaska. Uh, I asked for um, some numbers this morning. There are 4,952 contaminated land sites in the state. Uh, 1,179 of those are, are ANCSA lands, so full 24% of the contaminated lands that are on uh, the list for cleanup. We're working with the EPA. We had the EPA administrator before the Appropriations Committee here this morning, and they're working well with us. But the fact of the matter is, is we literally had to beg an agency to step forward because the Department of Interior just would not, they would not agree to be the lead agency. They were, uh, they would, they would sit at the table, but they would not take lead on this. And it is, it's a real sore spot with me because when <clears throat> in an effort to, to complete the obligation to honor the trust to our native peoples for fulfillment of their land claims, we convey lands that are tainted, that are soiled, that are polluted, that are contaminated. It's an affront. It really is. And so to hear uh, you say, Councilwoman Bryan, that you know, it's, it's such, a, such a tragedy that when these lands were taken from you, they were clean. Now you're getting them, you, you, we are figuring out a way to make this work. But it's an injustice. It really is. And um, I... I, I, I just, I, I am very bothered by, uh, by what our federal agencies have, um, have allowed over the years when it comes to, to the transfer of, of many of these lands to uh, Native people under Lands Settlement Acts. So I'm just going to ask you generally, does the department have any concerns with transferring known contaminated lands into trust, understanding that there's still trace contaminants, legacy pollution is what we call it, that's still being detected on these lands. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. With respect to this bill, uh, we believe based on our conversations with the tribe um, and their determination that this is in their best interests, uh, that this transfer uh, of la these lands into trust for the tribe would be in their best interests. And, and maybe I should direct this to you, Councilwoman Bryan. Is it in your best interest because you simply can't afford to pay the remediation costs? Thank you for the question. Um, this, one of the reasons this matters so much to us is that you can have developers up and down the waterfront buy a piece of property and develop it in the state it's in now. Because we put the land into trust and it requires this phase two, and there are legacy contaminants, there are legacy pollution, we are unable to do that. So putting the land into trust will allow us to develop it just like any other developer would be able to do. Uh, the Port of Tacoma and the Tacoma Tide Flats are heavily industrialized. They have been for years, and I, I too think it's an atrocity what the government has allowed to happen over the years. Um, and there's been a lot of cleanup. We had three Superfund sites right there in the Commencement Bay area. Um, our, our lands are very contaminated, and there's a lot of legacy pollution that I'm told in my lifetime with the best available control technologies we'll never be able to clean. Um, but we are where we are, and we have an opportunity here to put this land into trust that we've already purchased. I mean, our, our land was stripped from us. We're having to pay the highest price for it, and now we're unable to put it into trust because of this legacy pollution. Well, we want to get to, to a viable solution 
um, for the Puyallup tribe. And so uh, whether it's your shipping terminal or what you want to do with a great restaurant, um, we want to be able to facilitate that. Last question for you, um, uh, Assistant Secretary Newland. Um, can you share a little bit about the backlog at BIA on rights-of-way applications and why, why it's so important under this Unlocked Act to allow for a tribal self-determination process for the rights-of-way approvals? Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I don't have uh, data at my fingertips uh, at the hearing today uh, when it comes to the backlog of rights-of-way, but this has long been a sore spot. Uh, for tribes across Indian country, how long it takes uh, to get rights of way approved. Uh, the department has adopted new regulations in the last decade in an attempt to speed that up. But I think we all believe that uh, when tribes are making the decisions about how their lands get used and control the timelines, that uh, it moves faster and it's more efficient and, and ultimately works better for the tribe. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have further questions of the witnesses. I just thank them, and hopefully we'll be able to move these bills relatively expediently. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair. If there are no more questions for our witnesses, members uh, may also submit follow-up written questions for the record. The hearing record will remain open for two weeks. I want to thank all of the witnesses for their time and their testimony. This hearing is adjourned.